to make this Christmas coat and I know the name for it but I am not going to try to say that out loud. Anyway, I'm using this metal wire to do the framing for the goat. So first of all, I have two small ones for the legs, one big one for body, tail and neck. Then I'm going to wrap one around on the middle, the belly of the goat. And I'm going to shape the goat of these wires so that it looks just like I want it to. I'm going to mix some opaque white with a little bit of yellow and a tiny bit of caramel so I get this um, bread dough colored clay thing. I'm going to put my bacon bond onto the frame and then I'm going to make some thin slices that I am placing around the frame just to have something to work on. Don't make this too thick around uh, this little frame and I am not going to put anything on the tail because it needs to be kind of thin. I'm going to put some bacon bond on the back end of the goat so that I can build it out and make it look really good. For that I'm going to cut some strip of this clay that I rolled out in a thin setting on my pasta machine so that it's easier to work with. I'm going to cut out a tiny piece of this and put it on the tail and shape the tail to start with. Then I'm working on the two back legs and the body itself, the belly. It is kind of hard to explain what I am doing, but I am putting on these pieces of clay and I am going to make sure they sit really good and tight to the baked clay and I am giving them the textures that I need for this little goat. Just look at what I'm doing and uh, yeah, it's just hard to explain. I did this on both of the back legs and then I moved to the belly of the goat. As soon as I was happy with the textures on the back legs, the belly and the tail, 
I went to bake this. I made the front legs just like I did with the back legs taking a piece of clay putting it on there and making the details in the clay that I liked. When that was done I went to the head to build it up and make texture all over the head so that it looks just like I wanted it to. I wanted to have some more volume on top of the head, so I took a piece more of my clay, placed it there and uh, blended it in, gave it the texture that it needed, so this way it looks like it has always been there. I did cut out three thin slices of the clay and I carefully braided this little piece all the way down and I'm going to use these for the uh, horns on the goat. I rolled the braid a tiny bit to make it more firm and make sure that everything is connected. I cut that in half and I'm going to connect one of these on one side of the head, curl it uh, together and I'm gonna do that on the other side of the head as well with the other one. Now it is time for the red harness that this little goat is going to have on and I am again just taking my uh, clay through the pasta machine on the thinner setting using my bacon bond this time on the clay because I thought that would be easier and I'm going to cut out the stripes and just put them around where they are needed. First I am giving all four legs a tiny ribbon around the bottom of the legs. And I'm baking the goat quite a lot to make sure that I don't ruin anything that I made before. Then I place a tiny ribbon around the tail and the snout of the goat. And the upper end of all four legs are also getting a red ribbon around. around the neck and the ribbon around the chest, the torso of the goat. Then I'm making this crisscross ribbon that goes from the front, the top ribbon of the legs on the front, 
over the shoulder and up to the top around the neck ribbon and I'm doing this on both sides of the goat. And I'm going to make a crisscross ribbon around the back from the top of this uh, wristband it has and down uh, around the body of it. And I add a ribbon around the back near the tail going all the way around the body. I'm going to make a tiny bow that is going to sit on that ribbon we just put onto the goat. I have a old video where I show how to make these bows and I'm going to link to that video in the iCard and in the info box below. First I'm going to dry brush a little white on my coat to make it more realistic. Then I am using a dark gold paint that I'm also dry brushing over the coat. And then I am done with my coat. This took a lot of time, it was quite fun, but I'm not sure I'm gonna do that ever again. Anyway, I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a like. Thank you for watching and happy crafting.